No discussion of DNA would be complete without talking about a set of experiments that led to our understanding of DNA as the genetic material. The first in a set of landmark studies was done by Frederick Griffith. He injected mice with various strains of bacteria. One was the S strain, and when it was injected into mice, it killed the mice. This was a very virulent form of the bacteria. But the R strain, when injected into mice, did not kill the mice. They were perfectly fine and healthy. Then he heated the S strain bacteria to kill it. This is much like boiling water um, that you got maybe out of a stream to kill off the pathogens or the germs in that water. And sure enough, as he expected, the heat killed S strain did not harm the mice. It had destroyed whatever was allowing them to be lethal. But when he mixed the heat killed S strain with live versions of the R strain and injected that into mice, that also killed the mice. Two things that alone were harmless together were deadly. And so he predicted that there was some sort of material passed between these two things that allowed it to develop this lethal quality. Of all the classes of chemicals found in the body, two were the most intriguing candidates for being called the genetic material. Both were found in the nucleus as chromatin. So what was the genetic material? Was it DNA or protein that was the the seed of heredity. And for a long time, protein was favored because it had 20 monomers, those were the amino acids, rather than the four simple nucleotides. We understood these molecules from a chemical standpoint before we understood them from a biological standpoint. And so Hershey and Chase employed a simple organism, and that was a bacteriophage, which is a virus that can infect bacteria. Bacteria have their own viruses just like we have viruses and that bacteriophage is a has a special structure the outer part of the bacteriophage or the phage for short is a protein and then the inner core is dna and phages are very tiny compared to bacteria they're much lighter and so what they did was they grew two different flasks of phage and one flask was full of radioactive sulfur and so those phages incorporated sulfur into their proteins because that's where you find sulfur. The other grew in radioactive phosphorus and incorporated that phosphorus into its DNA. Both colonies were added to bacterial cells and after they were allowed time to infect that bacteria, the whole mess of phage and bacteria was spun in a blender to separate the bacteria from the phage. And then that was all put in a centrifuge to make the larger cells, the bacterial cells, sink to the bottom. And what we have in the bottom there is called a pellet. And so the pellet would include whatever had entered the cells. And sure enough, in the radioactive sulfur group, it was the liquid that was radioactive, but in the radioactive phosphorus group, it was the pellet that was radioactive. So radioactive DNA from the phage had entered the cells. And so this was just further evidence that it was DNA that was passing on the important hereditary information, in this case to make more phage, but... This was one in a series of experiments done as we were coming to that conclusion that it was DNA, the simpler molecule, as far as number of monomers at least, it was simpler, that was the hereditary information. The final experiment we'll discuss is known as one of the most beautiful experiments in all of biology, and it concerned the model for DNA replication, which is the process we'll discuss next, but there was debate about what how this process occurred. Was the, you know, 
was the new daughter cells, you know, because this process happens before mitosis, were the daughter cells getting, like, one gets the old DNA and one gets the new DNA? Was it an unequal mixture of bits of both? Or was it some sort of even distribution of old DNA and new DNA? Because, you know, mitosis starts with G1, you've got interphase and the old template DNA, and then you have the S phase, which replicates the DNA. So what is carrying on? How is that DNA being divided into those daughter cells? And so this experiment was done by Meselson and Stahl, and it, again, it's a very pretty experiment. They used radioactive atoms, just like Hershey and Chase, in this case, they were using a heavier form of nitrogen, which is also incorporated into DNA. In this case, you didn't have to worry about the difference between DNA and protein, so you could use nitrogen. And so nitrogen-15 was that heavier isotope of nitrogen, and they grew E. coli in food only containing that isotope, and then went ahead and mixed that E. coli into new food, which was only, or which only provided a nitrogen-14, the lighter form of nitrogen, as its food source. So all new DNA should have included that lighter isotope. And so E. coli replicates very quickly, and so right away they spun these E. coli in a density column and saw that they were 100% a single band, a heavy band of density. After another generation, about 20 minutes later, they had, again, a single band of density, but now it was lighter. And then they spun that again, and they still had that medium density, that light, you know lighter density, but now they had a lighter still, a, a band of very light E. coli. And as they went through, they continued to see just those two bands but more of the lighter and less of that medium density. So what was going on here? Well, the first generation had two heavy strands, generation zero. In the first generation that was grown in the N14 isotope, you had a mixture of heavy and a light strand that was replicated off of that template. In generation two, all four of those strands were used as templates for a new strand, so you ended up with two mixtures and two that were exclusively light. And then in generation three, a similar pattern, only you're adding in more of the exclusively light strains because those original two heavy strains are slowly kind of being washed out or diluted as the generations progress in the lighter isotope food. So, this was huge. This matched one of the three proposed models of DNA replication. That model was called semi-conservative. And with now all our molecular tools, we know that this is how DNA replicates. We know the details of how DNA replicates this way. But it is that half of the parent DNA but not all, is conserved and passed on to the next generation. So you get this even distribution of new DNA and old DNA. So there it is, the most beautiful experiment in biology.